Hey there, it's Elizabeth and welcome back to another ramble session. It's Monday after all. Um, yeah, so let me scoot in my chair this weekend. Well, I hope y'all had a good weekend and I hope y'all are doing well. We had a normal weekend, normal weekend. Yeah, we stayed home, we didn't go uh, down south. And yeah, we had some errands to run on Saturday, so we had a nice time together, me and the guys, so that was nice. We had to take our daughter's car out for a spin because she's been on vacation for a week and yeah, her entire vacation is two weeks long, so she won't be back until, oh, a week from today and I'm missing her immensely. Yes, I am. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's Fred. I only mentioned my chair because now I have a new chair. Well, it's new to me. My son went out and got himself a new desk chair. And so now I have myself a new desk chair. So it's on rollers. So it doesn't make that horrid noise every time I, you know, pull into my desk. So that's nice. So let's check on the Fobonichi front. Oh, I wanted to tell you too. Let me just make sure I'm in frame and all that. You'll see all this in a flip through, but I have been, uh, since my daughter's been gone, she left, when did she leave? There she is there. I hope there's not a glare. I might have to stand up just to make sure that there's not a super duper glare. There is my sweet girl at Mount Rushmore. Yeah, she is, she took two weeks to go out with her grandparents and uh, the rest of the, a lot of the family. There's, I think there's about 13 of them in my in-laws motor home <laughs> and so yeah she's been traveling out west so she's been to Montana and Wyoming and Arizona I think they're in Arizona now I don't even know where she is right now um where else Nevada Calif a little bit of California oh my goodness just all over and she's having a blast so there were I think this was the one that had the question uh April on the group had asked me I don't know if it was this one or another one, but this is what I've been doing. My daughter, um, kind of daily, she's really busy having fun, but daily she's been um, trying to send me photos of where she's been. So what I have done with them is I've actually made them into like an accordion. This one's a really big one. She sent me a lot of pictures and they had been, sorry for the glare. There she is, my beautiful girl. She was at the Prismatic Springs uh, in Wyoming. Yellowstone, she saw Old Faithful, then they went to Jenny Lake They at the Grand Tetons. I mean, just, oh my goodness gracious. So yeah, these are all four by six. I printed them out on four by six photo paper that I had actually picked up a huge stack of it for $3 at a thrift store a few years ago, and I'm finally getting around to using it, okay? So April had asked me how I'm doing all of these, and... Then on the back, I have written all about her travels, okay? And then they are, let's see how this goes. Then I just fold them up accordion style. And to protect them, I put them in this glassine bag. And then I used, uh, in, what's this called? An envelope with a window in it to put them in here for safekeeping. Now, she did ask me how I've been doing these and what I do for these that are collaged on here, I use a free app on my phone. It's called Pick Collage. You can pay for extra stuff, but I don't do that. I only use what's free and you just do it on your phone. You know, you make the collage on your phone and then I have an HP PhotoSmart, so it actually prints out in, you know, photo on photo paper. So that's how I've been doing that. Now, one of the tips was, or how, I guess what she asked me was how I put them together. And I have simply taped them with scotch tape together. Now, the key here so that they fold like easily is that you leave a tiny space in between the photos. I don't know if you can tell that, but yeah, you leave, it's like, an eighth of an inch or even a sixteenth of an inch, just a little bit so that the pictures fold nicely together, right? So there's that tip. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, so I've been having so much fun and last week I told you I was so behind on my Fobonichi. 
Well, I have since caught up. So yeah, I hear, hear more pictures of my daughter um, where she was going, hope there's not a glare. Oh, I, I keep having to get up and get down. So yeah, more and then more writing on the back, all that. Yeah, so um, there she is there. She's so gorgeous. Oh, I miss her so much. Yeah. So I've been having a lot of fun keeping up with that. And I was so behind. Yeah, in my Fobonichi, I was so behind that all last week I attempted to catch up and I only just caught, got, bleh, I'm tongue tied. I only just got caught up yesterday. Yeah. So while we were home this weekend, my poor husband, he was in so much pain yesterday that he pretty much rested all day on the couch. And so while he was resting, um, I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was working in here trying to get caught up. So I'm all caught up so far. I think I do have like three pages that are blank in here. I think I do. Yep. Here's a blank page and then I have two more blank pages. And you know what? I think they're just going to stay blank because... Yeah, I just don't have the inclination to go back and do that. Ooh, big thunder. I don't know if you could hear that, but it's our rainy season here in SoFlo. And so, yeah, we get rain, storms, thunderstorms. Usually they don't happen till the afternoon, but lately they've been happening a lot more frequently and in the mornings as well. So because I was working on my... Fobonichi catching up all last week. I worked on nothing else. Yeah, I worked on nothing else. So I am still currently trying to work on two more uh, faux flow books. Oh, speaking of the faux flow books, I have one that I did receive from my sweet swap partner, Michelle. I received it last week and I will be doing a flip on that soon. Here, I'll, let me get it and I'll show you just the the front cover of it. It's beautiful and I love it. Let me just get it here. Yeah, look at that bit of goodness. It's like, it's huge, okay? <laughs> it is huge and it's filled with wonderful goodness and oh yeah, so I will be doing a flip on this soon. Lovely trims and everything, oh my goodness. And if you don't know what a faux flow journal is, I am in a group called Junk Journal Connections on Facebook, wonderful group, and it is Jessica Rapp's group, so I'll leave all the links below, you know me, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry, and they were doing a swap over there for uh, flow, I'm sorry, faux flow journals, okay, get it together, Elizabeth, so we had a swap going on. And what a faux flow is, is it's a completely consumable book, right? So when I go through the flip through, here's her sweet little note that she sent me. When I go through this book in a flip through, hopefully sometime this week, um, I'll show you all the bits and pieces. Like you just fill it with a variety of things that the recipient can then use in their own journals. Okay, hope that made sense. And yeah, so I'm going to be doing a flip of one of them that I received. I had two partners. I had one partner here in the U.S. and one partner in the U.K. And so I'm waiting for the partner in the U.K. to get hers. Um, so once she receives her faux flow from me, then I will do the flip to show you what was in the books that I made. Okay. Yes. And then I will also do a flip through of this one hopefully this week yeah so there's that and I'm working on two more to send out because they were so much fun to make and I am making them out of I'll show you I am making them out of gift bags right how beautiful is that gift bag yeah so I cut this down and I actually make the cover out of this this right here and then on the inside I sew in fabric. So you guys have probably seen my faux, well, no, you haven't because I haven't posted it yet. Oh, silly Elizabeth. Yeah, you'll see what I mean when I post that video. <laughs> so anyhow, yeah, I get these pretty bags, you know, for a dollar at the Dollar Tree or I look through, I've got to look through my 
my um, stash of bags, you know, and see if I have some in there that'll work too, because I do want to make two more. They're, they're super fun to make. Um, I still need to work on my little girl journals. I still have the never, <clears throat> excuse me again, the never ending child craft book, which already has a recipient. I just need to finish it. Yeah. So I've got a lot of stuff I'm working on. Um, here's this. Oh my goodness. This is like the never ending throw, right? I love this thing. Oh my goodness. It was so much fun to make. I'm still not done with it. I still have a few more rows to do to make it long enough. I'm going to make it about six feet long and it is, I don't even know how wide it's double this width, right? And each of these rows, which are five rows of crochet a piece, each of these rows takes me about an hour. So at the end of this, it will have taken me about 24 hours to complete. I'm a slow crocheter, but I'm having so much fun doing it. Yeah. And then I'm kind of getting overwhelmed in my craft room because, you know, if you're a crafter, you got a lot of crap. You know what I mean? And it needs to be um, organized and I'm not the best organizer. So yeah, um, that's part of the reason too I was so behind with my Fobonichi because, oh my gosh, just too, too much stuff and I have no organizational skills. I really need a professional organizer. That's what I need <laughs> to come in here and help me to organize. But anyway, what you're looking at here is... Um, <clears throat> this is a lap book and the only reason I'm showing it to you is because my, my poor son, his bedroom is like the catch all in our house. The poor thing. Um, we have, I mean, everything's relative, right? But the thing that we're lacking in our home is closet space. So we, we have very little closet space, very little storage space, and it's really hard to, find a place for everything right so this weekend he came out with with like three three copy boxes that were full of my kids schooling stuff if you didn't know I used to be a um a public school teacher and then once I had children 22 years ago once I started having children I homeschooled them from beginning to end until they went on their way graduated high school and went on their way to college and now have since graduated college and university so anywho the reason I wanted to show you this is because in one of the boxes held my kids lap books and this is how I would teach them history. This lap book, what this is made out of, and it's a brilliant idea, not mine, not my idea, mind you, but it's one of those like medical uh, file folders and it has like three different sections. And then if you don't know what a lap book is, it's actually like a glorified pop-up book for, you know, older kids. This is how thick it is, okay? Like super duper thick. Let me see. It's, it's like two and a half, two and a half inches thick. Okay. And I'm just showing it to you because it was just so bittersweet. So he brought these boxes out and he's like, mom, I don't have room to keep my clothing in my closet. You've got it jam slam full of school stuff. So then that got me to thinking, oh my goodness. You know, I mean, my kids have already graduated university, you know, like they're done with their schooling for now. And now it's like the bittersweet project of going through their school stuff and actually getting rid of it. Yeah, N I would never get rid of this thing ever, 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 ever. Let me open it while I yammer. This is how I used to teach history, um, if you're interested. Um, yeah, so now I have to go through the arduous task of going through these copy boxes and all the files of like literally 13 years of schoolwork times two, okay? So, yeah, a lot of schoolwork, and I'm going to be chucking it. Uh, yeah, gosh, that even hurts to say. But in all seriousness, like, do I really need to keep a file of calculus? I don't think so. So, anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick gander at this. Again, this is a lap book. It's made completely out of 
file folders and it's like a glorified pop-up book. So like this year in history, we were learning about um, world history and oh my goodness, like this right here was all about King Arthur and the Knights and Camelot and all of this. This was done almost 10 years ago. My kids were, were in um, middle school at the time and it's all like, oh my gosh, opens, here, there, and everywhere, okay? Like this right here, it actually comes out. Like it's an interactive book, you know? This right here, these are all the Knights of the Round Table. Oh gosh. This opens up and here is the, the Holy Grail, of course. So she wrote about the Holy Grail. This is um, my daughter's book. My son has one just like it. Um, and then it opens up this way as well. So we have all of that, learning about England and British and back in, you know, the olden days. And yeah, so this is how we, we, we would do history. And oh my gosh, I mean, what beautiful memories. I will keep these and cherish these like forever. We learned about the Vikings. So like this whole, let me see. Oh my goodness. This whole entire section here, this this one is all on the Vikings, right? Oh my goodness. So it just flips and flaps and pockets and so many different things. This opens up and we learned about runes and they made their own runes out of little pebbles and spelled out their names and wrote the rune alphabet. And this go, this like, oh, you can't see it. This like flips up and flips out and all about just different things, you know, nutty nicknames. Oh my goodness. All these different things. So fun. So fun. This flips up. So it has like that, you know, pictures and a whole just stuff. Just so much information. And by doing history here, weapons of the Vikings. Does this come out? No. I don't know how this works here. Oh, it folds down this way. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This was just so much fun. Oh, this opens up too. Like everything, everything is like all these hidden things. How to be a good Viking. Oh my goodness. Oh, this was one of the things too. I won't go on too much longer. I could, I could talk about this all day. One of their assignments that I had them do was a menu, a Viking, um, a Viking menu, right? So my daughter did one and it was called the Mean Mead Pub because we learned about mead, which is what they drank. <laughs> Gosh. And then they had to come up with their own address next to the Willow Inn on the right side, East Brute Drive, number four, the Viking town of Figglehorn. Oh my goodness. Yes. So many things. Oh my goodness. And we had learned about like what they ate back then and stuff like that. So the appetizers are sour pickle feet and cream oh my goodness oh my gosh all you have is thyme and cheese old buck stews seagull stew because they used to eat seagulls and then like you know how on menus it you know it says we accept you know whatever mastercard or whatever we accept gold and silver silver coins also trades Oh my gosh, the mean me, this is a little synopsis of the family business. The mean mead pub has been in the Bjorn family for over a century. They've taken great care in providing quality food for even their persnickety customers. We also give out a complimentary rune for free with every meal. Yeah, that was one of their assignments. And they actually did it all themselves, you know, like they did it all up on the computer. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes, this brings back so many fond memories. Holy cow. And they did these things here where it's like an acetate. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Just makes me want to have more kids so I can homeschool them. Okay. Yeah, no, that was a lie. I'm done. I'm done homeschooling. But this was so much fun. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I'm going to probably end up sitting here going through all of these books. We did this thing here. It was about Vikings. These were all about Vikings. Oh my gosh. This was the Storm in Normans. 
Oh my goodness. And we actually, for this whole year of history, one of our supplementary or supplementary, however you want to say it, readers was actually a UK series called The Horrible Histories. And for you guys in the UK, you might know what I'm talking about. They are terrific books for middle school when you're learning about history. Yeah, it was called The Horrible Histories. Oh my goodness. In here, they did their own Bayou Tapestry out of Sharpie markers. Oh my gosh, if you could see that, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, yes. I love teaching my kids at home, holy cow. The crusades we learn about, oh, look at that. Talking about the pilgrimage and their symbols of faith. Oh my goodness, yeah, and it just, it, it opens up everywhere. Pop up, such a fun way, oh, we learned about castles. Oh my goodness gracious, what a fun way. Oh, let me show you this real fast. I think it's in here. No, is it in here? These all flip up. No, it's not in here. Where is it? Um, Where is it? Ah! It was like a, I can't think of, oh here, duh. Look at that right there. <laughs> Oh my gosh and in here oh this little thing the gate you know of the castle raises up and then there's a picture of my sweet daughter <laughs> dressed in renaissance oh my gosh this was so much fun this was so much fun I could talk about like I said I could talk about this all day long oh my gosh and always like in the end I would have them do a culminating like activity and it was a newsletter a lot of times. So yeah, they would do those all on their own on the uh, on the computer, right? Oh my gosh, such a fun way to learn about history. Anyway, that was a very um, off the journaling arts craft subject, but I just wanted to share that with you because <laughs> I found it when my son brought the boxes out from his room. So yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, the rest of the day today, now that I'm caught up on my Fobonichi, I am going to try to catch up on some other things. Don't know if I'm going to go live tomorrow or not. Uh, we'll have to see. I don't know. I might pop on. And otherwise, yeah, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's a little off subject of what I normally show you guys, but it was just a very fond memory. And yeah, I love going through these old books that my kids created. So, yep, I will talk to you all real soon. And yeah, have a great rest of your day. Thanks.